Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of a Swift Escape 696. So starting the walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first locker you get to is your LPG locker. So this is liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker. So inside you can fit two six kilogram propane bottles. We've got our test bottle on here. So what you do is you'd get the first bottle right at the back and then you'd use the strap and put this round the neck of the bottle before you put the pigtail on so that goes right the way over and clamps around here and then to connect the pigtail to the bottle all you need to do is it's a left hand thread with the being gas so opposite threads and there's no need for a spanner as it's a hand tighten pigtail and all you do is hand tighten it onto here via the black collar and then turn the cylinder on and off from the top of the bottle so you turn it on when you're on site and turn it off mm -hmm. when you start to drive off turn it off first here you have your cassette locker so for your cassette locker press the buttons in fold the locker door down and then to get the cassette out itself you'd lift the orange handle and slide the cassette free of the vehicle you can then either carry it or you can drag it with the handle because it's got wheels on the bottom to your waist disposal point this is normally beside your toilet block on site and then to empty all you need to do is take the grey cap off press the yellow button and tip the content of the cassette out once you've tipped it out there's normally a tap there so you put some water in here give it a shake and tip out again and then fill this with a cap full of chemical into here or you can do it an eye or you can do it by eye you want about 120 milliliters of either the blue or the green into here and then it can go straight into the van and be used and that's your cassette at the back you've got your storage so you can fold the bottom bunk up so the bottom bunk does fold up and it attaches to the back there so it can be folded all the way up when you travel and you can put bikes and bits and pieces large items in the back we do have your carpets you've got your rafter pole your own winding handle there in the back but you do have storage if you lift this bottom bunk up clear it to the back points there you'll see so just like a latch, there's two latching points on the back, the seal. On the back you've got your high level brake light and your bike rack. So there's bike rack arms that need to be fitted to here as we're doing this prior of the vehicle being sold. So they get fat, fitted onto the top there, your bikes go on the rails and then these go through the bike wheels to tie the bike wheels to the rail and then there's a crossbar which looks like which is a bit like an arm and all it does is it clamps on to the top of the bike from here so you'll have one small one one really long one and it just goes in size order obviously the the, the fourth bike being the furthest away from the van needs the longest arm to hold the bike crossbars On the passenger side, you've got, your, you've got your vents for your fridge, you've got your awning, and you do have your awning light. Your door is individually locked with the habitation key, it isn't off the certain locking. So this is your fresh water filling point. So these are the habitation keys, one of them does the locks and the hub door, one of them does just solely the water filler point. So what you'll need is you'll need to go and get yourself a hose pipe or some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. So you need the screw on end, you need the hose lock end and then you can use the key, take the cap off and put the hose into here. Fill it until it overflows or until you're happy there's enough water on board which you can see on the main control panel on board. Here you have your battery locker. 
So you've got your leisure battery there, so you've got a platinum leisure battery there, and it is a 75 amp hour battery. You've got your hookup point, so to hook the vehicle up, you get your power lead, whether you are hooking it up at home to charge a leisure battery or you're on site. Lift the collar and expose the end, and then slide it on here. Always hook the vinyl up first, then the power source, and do it in reverse order when unhooking the vehicle. And then you do also have an external TV point. So what you can do is you can put a carrier length of coax, should you be on a super site which has access to their TV aerial, you can connect to your van and connect to their point, and you can use their aerial instead of using the aerial on the roof of the vehicle. Trum event. So should you be heating your water on gas, this cover needs to come off. So hand on the top, thumb in the middle, lift the cover off to allow the fumes out. When you start traveling, pop the cover back on. When you wash the vehicle, pop the cover back on. It stops dirt getting into here. But take it off when you're heating the water on gas. And the best place to put this is in the passenger door pocket. Diesel filler for the vehicle. So to fill the vehicle with diesel using the Fiat Ducato key, you can fill with fuel. Higher pressure, so five bar on the front, which is 72.3 psi, and five and a half bar on the back, which is 79.5 psi. So, there your tire pressures. You've got a tool kit underneath the passenger seat, which includes a jack and a brace and a tornai. And then, underneath this panel here in the floor is where your engine battery lives underneath there. So, should you ever need to change it or you want to put a trickle charger on it in the winter, you just got to lift that cover off. And your bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. So underneath the bonnet, you do have your screen wash, brake fluid, power steering fluid and coolant, oil filler and dipstick, pain code there for the Imperial Blue 455, weight plate for the vehicle, so go off this one now. It's been SV tack because it's previously been 3650. It now is three and a half ton with your front and back axle weights. And then should you ever need to jump start the vehicle as the battery's underneath the floor, earth so sorry, positive off here and earth and off beside the headlight. Passenger headlight, there's a little bolt you'd earth off there. So to operate your control panel, you turn your power button on here, which will either turn 12 volt on if you're not hooked up, solely off your leisure battery or if you press the button and you are hooked up you'll get this light here which means you're hooked up and then you'll be able to turn the cab lights on so all the lights inside the vehicle this is the master switch for them and then they all are individually switched around the van you can view your levels so you can view your leisure your vehicle, your fresh and your wastewater levels there should you have enough water on board, you can turn your pump on and it'll pressurise the water to the taps, toilet and shower. And then you do have your awning light, which is the light on the outside of the vehicle, which you can turn on and off, off the control panel. In the kitchen area, you do have three lit gas rings. So make sure that they're cool enough to touch before you put the glass lid down. Otherwise, if it is too hot, this glass can shatter. And underneath, you've got your oven, which is lit there at the back, and above, you've got your grill. So there's your oven and grill. You may want to take the oven shelf and grill pan out when travelling or wrap them up as they can cause a little bit of rattling when on the road. And then, like I've said, Leave this to cool down so it's cool enough to touch before you put the glass lid down. Above the kitchen you do have two overhead lockers. So you've got one with a cup rack and a plate rack in and the other with a shelf in. Pressing these buttons to open them in the centre of the cupboard door as that's your travel catch. Storage underneath with a slide out Draw, cutlery drawers above the fridge there, 
I'll get onto the fridge in a moment. And underneath you do have a draining board and some storage. So you can put your drainer on there to drain your dishes off. And then underneath the oven, you do have some storage and you've got two isolation taps. So it tells you what they're for. The blue one is the, the hob oven and grill and the green one is your fridge. So they're there. So you can isolate the gas supply should you ever need to. But if you do need to isolate the gas supply, turn the bottle off to be safe. These are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced. So to operate your fridge, your fridge is a three-way fridge. So at present, it's in the off position. So the fridge isn't used, it's parked up, you'd have the fridge off. If you turn it to the left, the once, you get the gas flame. And you hear it clicking in the background. So this, you'd operate the gas if you're wild camping. And then what you need to do is you need to hold the temperature now, Pierce, in. And you'll see this red band slowly start to go into the green once it goes into the green you'll be able to let go and it will light on gas that's the fridge lit on gas there so you'd use that if you're wild camping and you had no other way of cooling your fridge however if you are on site you can go to the next source so turn it from gas to the left and you've got a picture of a plug. This is mains 240 volt. So if you're pre-chilling the fridge at home, before you put your shopping in, you'd have it on mains. If you were on a site, you'd have it on mains because you've paid for your electric. So you're gonna use theirs as much as possible. Then obviously you can adjust the temperature to suit, this being this one here. And then if you've pre-chilled it and you've put your shopping in and it's all chilled, and you're ready to drive off to your next site or your first site from home you can put on the battery setting which is this one here and what that'll do is it'll send a 12 volt feed when the engine is running and it'll keep your temperature of your fridge the same when departing so it's got to be pre-chilled beforehand uh, so we'd normally say put your fridge on about two days before allow it to chill a day before put your shopping in allow your shopping to chill and then when you put the engine on and put on the battery setting it'll keep the temperature of the fridge is the same so it'll act like a giant cool box until you arrive back on site or you've moved from one site to another and then you can either go back to mains electric or you can go back on to gas should you be wild camping and then when you are finished with your fridge if you do just clean it all out and then what you want to do is you want to leave the door open so just leave rest the door open there so that you can get ventilation in and out the fridge because if you do shut the door, it forms an airtight seal and then you will get smells and mould growing in your fridge because the air is trapped. So to stop the smells and the mould, leave the door ajar to allow ventilation in and out of the fridge. So to operate your Trumatic gas fire, so the gas side is the left hand side. So you've got an ignition and the gas control valve. So you can choose your temperature, so it's from 1 to 10. Push it in, ignite, and then you'll be able to look in the little pilot hole there. And you'll see that it's lit there with a the little orange flame at the bottom. And you'll also hear it go. So if you push the valve in, you'll hear it roar. And that's the fire operating on gas. So if you were wild camping and you wanted to heat the vehicle, you'd use the gas fire. Because obviously you can't use your electric side because you're not hooked up. So this is your gas side. And then here you do have a fan and a fan setting. So this is a 12 volt assisted fan. So one to five is just the assisted fan, which helps push it around the various parts of the van via the ducting. But you've got a choice. So where this little valve is now, it's in the off position. So that's convecting out the front of the fire. So it's not using any 12 volts. So if you were wild camping, you're not wasting your battery of your leisure battery so it'll convect out the front but do be careful that you don't catch any loose clothing on here and then you've got A which is automatic setting and it'll blow through the various parts of the van but once it hits a certain temperature it will cut out or you've got to the other side manual mode and it'll simply blow through the various ductings around the van but it won't 
cut out you will have to either come and adjust the temperature or adjust the fan speed and you can use the fan speed on electric as well and I'll show you where your electric control is in the next clip but if you're well camping you may not want to use the 12 volt assisted fan because it's going to take out some of life some of the three day life that you have in a fully charged leisure battery away from you so you may just want to put it in the middle setting and let it convect out the front like a normal fire so above your rear traveling seats directly behind the driver's seat is the location of your electric heater so this is your truma ultra heat 230 volt so it's off there now and you've got two settings below it and a setting above it so you've got 2000 watts which is two kilowatts of mains electric and then the middle is a thermostat so 9 is equivalent to 30 degrees so you can adjust the temperature to suit of the thermostat so 2000 which is 2 kilowatts which you can use on most sites throughout the UK and then you've got 500 watts which is half a kilowatt so you may have to use this on smaller CL sites as when you're abroad if you are taking the vehicle abroad and then you've got a thousand watts which is one kilowatt of mains 230 volt so depending on what the amperage the site gives you will determine whether you use a thousand watts or two thousand watts just watch what you're also running at the same time as having the heater on as you may trip your vehicle out and then you know that you just need to turn the heating down or off when you use another high voltage appliance which draws a lot of electric from your either 12 or 16 amp supply from your site. To operate your hot water system on electric, this is your ultra store switch. So off is in the middle. One kilowatt of mains power, which is 750 watts, is on the top. And then your bigger voltage being two kilowatts which is 1500 watts is on the bottom so depending on what the side gives you an amperage whether it's 12 or 16 amp will determine whether you use one or two kilowatts of power if you're tripping your van with this on two kilowatts and the heating on two kilowatts you may need to turn one down to one kilowatt and it will adjust itself so that it doesn't trip the motorhome out but this is how you would heat your 10 litres in your boiler on mains electric in your wardrobe you've got your vision plus tv booster at the back so you can boost the signal on the amplifier and obviously if it's shown red you may want to boost it so it goes to green if it's still showing orange or red you then need to adjust the aerial so to adjust the aerial what you need to do is you need to loosen this white nut off push the stem up and then use the toggle to direct the aerial on the roof but look where your other motorhomes and caravans are pointing on your site point yours in a similar direction and then you should be able to get a decent enough signal but then before you do start traveling make sure it's pulled in and the nuts fastened so that the wind doesn't get underneath the aerial and cause any damage to you to your tv aerial in your washroom You've got your toilet, so to operate your toilet, ensuring that the pump's turned on on the panel, what you'll be able to do is press and hold the blue button, which will give you fresh water flush. So there, the toilet's flushing. So always put some water in the toilet first, and then before use, if you just open the blade, which is this grey handle here on the front of the toilet, so slide it away from you to the right, then use the toilet with this blade open give it a flush after use so we flush it after use and then if you're going to use any pink liquid if you've bought the blue and the pink in a multi-pack just put a little bit of pink in a spray bottle and dilute it with water spray the bowl then give it a flush and then what you want to do is you want to close the blade so bring this grey handle back towards you to the left shut it and then when the cassette indicates it's full, which it will just here, there'll be a light underneath the diagram of the cassette. 
you can then pull it straight out the side of the van and empty the cassette because the mechanism isn't engaged however if it was open the blade the, the cassette won't come out because it's physically engaged in the vehicle got a toiletry cabinet there with a toilet roll holder towel rail some toiletry space underneath your sink with your shower curtain that comes over the door and around the toilet to stop it from getting wet your light so your light switch there for turning your lights on and off so, so making sure that it's on on the panel you can turn the lights on and off and then you'll be able to operate your taps that's your tap run and then slowly make your way around to the hot as it's starting to fill the boiler because the vehicle's being drained down So this is what will happen if you've drained the boiler down and you're then trying to refill it. It'll just gurgle the water until you get a free flow of water from the hot side. This is when you know that your system is then full and primed. So on the hot and the cold you'll get water no problem. And that is your system primed as your water is really hot there. And then your lights working so you can turn it on and off via the cord or by itself off the light itself so to make the bed what you need to do is lift the cushion out the way so you can use this reel because that's where the table sits on on both sides and then you'd lift your table up to 90 degrees and you'll be able to lift it off the bar and then what you want to do is you want to press this button here and fold your leg in two so it halves the leg and then you just put your table down on the board like so that forms the bed base there and then if you lift and slide two sections out here you create the infill for this space and then you use the backrest the infill cushion and the two top cushions here from either side on the top of the table there and you create your double bed so to make your double dinette into a bed I'll show you how you put your table down to create the bed board here but you'd use the backrest off the long side bench seat onto here this will slide out which I'll show you in a second use your infill cushion along to infill the gap and then use the top two sections of the travelling seats as they've got hard backed boards and that'll sit on top of the table and create the double bed so you've got a large double bed there and that's how your cushions go this cushion however is not needed so the cushion there you can put out the way because it's not needed so at the back here, you do have your power supply unit, so it's an AC 400 unit. You've got a system shutdown button, meaning the black button, so if you're parking it up for the winter and you don't want a power drain, you can turn that off and that'll isolate the leisure battery. And then directly underneath, you've got all your 12 volt fuses. So do carry some spares with you, just in case one does blow. Here's the list of fuses and the amperage that you require. In there in the number what fuses does what and then you do have your RCD so your main trip tester there and your MCBs and then you've got your charger your space heater and your water heater on electric leave these illuminated and forget about them don't turn them off they will automatically come on and off with the 240 volt input from the hookup lead three-way battery charger so that charges your leisure battery and your vehicle battery when hooked up and then you do have your solar panel regulator there so solar panel does its own thing just leave it just monitor the battery voltage via your main control panel 
So underneath your side facing bench seat behind the passenger seat, this is your fresh water tank. So to drain your fresh water off, if you're winterizing, if you've taken on a contaminated source of water, or you're simply just not using the vehicle for a couple of weeks, to drain it off, bolted to the other side of this is a plug. So if you put your hand in the tank, pull the chain, there is a, there is a plug in there in the bottom corner. So feel around for it. It's a red plug, rubber bung, just pull it out and that'll drain off the water directly out underneath the chassis. You've also got a fuse in the fuse holder here, which is your main battery fuse. So that's a 40 amp main battery fuse there for the leisure battery, because that's the electric unit there for the leisure battery and the hookup point. And then this side, you've got your water pump, but you've also got your boiler. So your boiler holds 10 litres of water at any one time. When we are experiencing colder temperatures in the winter, it's very important that you drain this off. You drain the full vehicle off. So you drain this tank off, you drain your waste off, you drain your boiler off, and you'd open all your taps throughout the motorhome to stop any airlock or any water sitting any in any plastic pipes. So what you need to do to drain it off is, this is the yellow drain down toggle. Making sure that the pump's off and you've come in with no power on, you can just lift this up and it will drain off all the water in the tank. You'd leave it stood up in that position during the time you've got the vehicle stood up and not in use. And then when you come to reuse it, if you just lie it back down, just flick it back down, put the plug back in the tank so you can fill the fresh water, shut the waste, shut all the taps in the motorhome, fill the vehicle up. Fill it up with water, come in, put the control panel on, put the pump on. If you go at the cold side first, you'll get a automatic pressurized flow of cold water because it's drawn it from this tank via that pump straight to the tap. Once you go at the hot side, it will cough, splutter, and make all sorts of noises because it's drawn it from this tank via the pump into here. Once this reaches 10 litres of water, then pushes it out the tap, which you've got open, and then your system is then primed. But remember, drain these off because it's not covered under warranty and a Truma boiler is very expensive to repair or replace should you have frost damage. So drain it off to avoid frost damage. So located just behind the passenger seat, this is your Truma Ultra Store switch for heating your water on gas. So you can't go wrong with this switch, so if you're well camping, make sure that your cover's off on the outside of the van. And then you've got two settings, so you've got off in the middle, 50 degrees of heating that 10 litres of water, or 70 degrees of heating your water. So depending on how hot you want your water, you can choose whether it's 50 or 70 degrees, and that's the 10 litres in the boiler. And it will light on gas. And then you do have a TV point and a TV aerial connection, a 230 volt plug for charging devices, or if you're gonna use a mains telly, but we recommend the 12 volt tellies because if you are well camping, then you can use the 12 volt telly off your leisure battery. You do have to be hooked up for this plug to work. And you've got a TV bracket. And then all your little lights underneath the cabinets are individually switched as they are individually switched reading lights. So in the overhead, you do have another double bed in the over, ca over cab compartment. So you can put your ladder on here and you can gain access up and down to that double bed or you can take the ladder off you can store things up there and then when you travel you can push this up put your light bedding and all your clothes and all your light bits and pieces at the top push this up and it gives you access in and out the cab without banging your head and you've got curtains there to draw so that you get privacy for whoever's sleeping up there <laughs> 